Kevin is going to summarize the uh, programs, I mean, the, the points of the previous class now. I've been, uh, will be doing that. Thanks again, everyone. Uh, so in the previous cyber study, we started off with the question, which was um, what will happen to people like will uh, people who have not heard the gospel go to heaven? So under that, uh, the main points, the main reference was Romans chapter 2, verse 12 through 16, which said God has given a conviction about him in themselves. And the other two points under that main point was the judgment according to their own conscience and no punishment without judgment. And then the next question was, what is the biblical concept about the body, soul, and the spirit? Um, under that, one biblical reference was 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23, uh, which said, may your spirits, uh, spirit and soul and body be preserved, complete, without blame, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and then we said that soul and spirit are interrelated, after that, we spoke about um, the body, the soul, and the spirit individually. Um, the first one was the body. Um, the references were Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, and Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, uh, which said that our, uh, our body uh, is basically our external part, outer organ, possessing world con uh, consciousness, both the flesh and bones. After that, it was the soul, which is our very self, uh, which is also our personality, emotions, uh, media, medium between our spirit and our body. The references were Matthew 16, verse 26, and then Luke 9, verse 23. Um, and the third one was our spirit, which is our innermost part, which is also our inner organ, uh, possessing God, um, godly consciousness, and then able to contact God. Um, next one, we spoke about heaven and its compartments. The four main references uh, mentioned were uh, Ephesians 4, verse 8 through 10, uh, Genesis 1, verse 1, uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 2, and then Psalms 33, verse 6. Um, after that, we spoke about the three levels of heaven in the Bible. Uh, first one was the immediate atmosphere. Under that, uh, two of the main references were Psalms 78, verse 23 and 24, which said God provided food and rain. And then um, the next one was Genesis chapter 7, verses 11 through 12. It said flood came upon on the earth. So, and then after that, as an explanation to that compartment, we read um, the main point, sub points were the firmament, the atmosphere of the earth, which is the immediate sky. And then the birds and the eagles of the heaven, clouds and the visible heaven above them. Then the second uh, compartment was the outer space, which was the starry heaven. Um, sun, moon, and stars are fixed in the orbit. And the reference, Bible reference was Jeremiah 8, verse 2, and Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. And also Psalms chapter 19, verse 1. Then the third one was uh, the heaven of heavens, uh, which is the dwelling place of God and his angels. Um, and then some of the references for the heaven of heavens were uh, Deuteronomy 10, verse 14, um, 1 Kings 8, verse 27, and then Psalms 115 verses 16. Um, and the one more reference was uh, where Paul was taken up to the third heaven, which was in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 4, uh, 12 verse 2. So those, those were the things that we covered in the previous class. Okay, great. <clears throat> so that was the, uh, that was the previous portion that we have been uh, discussing in the, in the previous class. Uh, so I was trying to uh, clarify your questions and doubts related to the eschatology in the previous weeks. And I got one more question. Uh, so I will try to answer that question also now. And then uh... First you stuck. A bit.
Is it for only us or others can hear? Uh, I think they all, the whole country got dropped. Oh. Okay, yeah, Albin is back. Oh, okay. You can hear me now? Yes. Okay. I think uh, there was a disconnection with uh, the web, uh, the internet. So, okay. Now it's okay, no? Yeah. Okay. We will, uh, you know, so, uh, so I, I, as I, as I told you that uh, we already completed uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, chapter up to chapter four of the book of Revelation. Now, uh, we will be studying from the book of uh, uh, Revelation chapter five. But before that, I have to uh, clarify your answer for one of your question. The question is, uh, is there any possibility for a person's name to be uh, erased or removed from the book of life? Is there any possibility for, or is there any uh, chance that uh, for a person's name to be erased or removed from the book of life. So that is the question which I got. And uh, I will try to uh, answer for the question with uh, some of the uh, Bible references. And we are going to read uh, Revelation chapter 20, uh, verse 15. Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. Um, yeah, who, who will be reading? Elsa is ready? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Okay, so here we read uh, that uh, there is there is a book called the book of life. Okay, so the question is related to that. The book of life is uh, in heaven. So in this particular verse, we read that there is a book called the book of life. So when a person become a child of God, his name will be written in the in the in the book of life in heaven. But if he is continuing sin. <clears throat> or if he is backsliding from the presence of God, then there are uh, uh, chances that his name could be erased or removed from the book of life. Uh, that uh, uh, we, can, we can prove that uh, through some other uh, uh, references. The first reference is Exodus chapter 32, verse 30, uh, 33. Exodus chapter 32, verse 33, yeah. But the Lord said to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. Okay, what is that? Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out him out of my book. So there is a book in heaven. The book name is still the book of life. And whoever sinned against me, uh, his name will be blot out uh, uh, of my book. Okay, again. One more uh, reference that is from Psalms, Psalms number 69, verse 28. Psalm number 69, verse 28. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living. Let them not be enrolled among the righteous. Okay, so here also uh, the uh, psalmist is uh, speaking about uh, a, a, a kind of person, the wicked person or the, the sinful person. Uh, you know, uh, it says that let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written in the righteous, in, in, uh, with the righteous people. That means uh, there is a book of the living that is the same thing that the, the book of life. Okay. So uh, it, it says that let them be blotted out of the book of the living. That means there are chances that uh, the, the, the person's uh, name uh, will be blotted out or removed or erased from the book of life. Now we will go to Revelation chapter 3 uh, verse 4. Revelation chapter 3 verse 4. There is a, there is a particular uh, uh, usage that we can see that whether a person's name uh, can be erased or removed from the book of life. Yes, Revelation chapter 3 4. Yet you still, yet you have still a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in the, in white, for they are worthy. Okay, so this is the message for the church at Sardis. So they are believers, and they that, that is a Christian church. Okay, uh, this is a Christian church. The, the church at Sardis is a Christian church, and uh, uh, that is a believer. I mean, so uh, uh, John, Apostle John is writing uh, to a church, the Christian church, the believer's church. So what happens there? 
Now he says that who he who overcomes uh, shall be clothed in white garments and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. I will not blot out his name from the book of life. That means the overcomer's name will be, uh, sorry, will not be blotted out from the book of life. That means the name of a person who could not hold that faith till the end will be erased from the book of life. So this is the this is the clarity that we are getting uh, from the word of God, especially when uh, uh, God is giving the messages to the church at service. You know, it says that he who overcomes shall be clothed with the white garments and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. That means if the person is overcoming, that means his name will be there in the book of life. At the same time, if that person is not able to overcome the worldly pleasures and all the uh, worldly things and everything or the sin or Satan, that person's name will be plotted out uh, from the book of life. When? So that means the person who could not uh, hold the faith till the end. So this is important to understand that we have to hold fast uh, or hold firm the faith in Jesus Christ till the end, till the end. That means otherwise uh, uh, that, that name will be erased from the book of life. You know, uh, some people uh, believe when a person become a child of God, uh, his, he, his salvation is secured, right? His salvation is secured. That means when a person is accepting Jesus, as his or her personal savior, then person, that person or the, the salvation of that person is secured. So there is no nothing to be worried about uh, the salvation because that is already secured. Even uh, if, he, if he continues in sin or sinning uh, and uh, uh, even after the salvation also, uh, surely he will go to heaven. This is, this is a particular belief that uh, some of the Christian people are believing and teaching. You now they say that, okay, once that if that person is becoming a child of God and if that person <clears throat> is saved, then if that person is accepting Jesus as his personal savior, then that person's salvation is secured. So that, that means nobody can do anything with his salvation. So he will go to heaven. Uh, this, is, this is called uh, the, the security of salvation. This is called the security of salvation. That means the, the, the salvation is secured in heaven forever and ever. Uh, you know, at any cost, uh, you will not lose your salvation. That is their teaching. But let us see uh, what Bible uh, says about uh, uh, this subject. You know, uh, In biblical view, there are three particular theological terms used for the salvation. Okay. There are particular three, uh, uh, three terms are used uh, uh, theologically for the salvation. And we believe there are three experiences of salvation. So it is a little difficult to understand this portion because um, many of the people, uh, uh, sorry, some of the people, they don't believe that, okay, there are, uh, it, is, it is hard to believe for them that there are three, three uh, different experiences of salvation. You know, I, I can tell you, there's a past salvation and present salvation and the future salvation. Past salvation, present salvation, and future salvation. So as I'm uh, speaking about these things, if you're getting any, any doubt or questions, you can just text to me. Uh, I will try to uh, clarify those questions in the, in the uh, 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 coming class. Okay, so let me explain this. Now, uh, uh, the three terms uh, theologically you can, you can call for the salvation is justification, sanctification and glorification. Justification, sanctification and glorification. Or in other ways, you can say the past, present and the future salvation. Past, present and future salvation. Okay, so how can we explain those things? Let me, let me try to explain those things. The, the first one is we are saved. The first one is we are saved. And the second one is we are being saved from the influence of sin. We are being served from the influence of sin. And third one is we will be saved. We will be saved. So listen. So I'll, I'll try to explain what is this. You know, the three experiences of salvation. Threefold experiences of salvation. The first one is we are saved. How can a person say that I am saved? That means when a person is uh, accepting Jesus as his personal savior, then that person can say that I am saved. 
I am saved. That's true. That's true. And saved from what? The person is saved from the deliverance. That means this is the deliverance or the salvation from the punishment or penalty of the sin. That means Bible says uh, uh, there is, there is, there is, uh, the, the wages of the sin is death. Okay. So God has uh, uh, assigned uh, the, the death or the uh, eternal hell for a person uh, that per, if that person is not saved. So we, when we think about a person, when he is accepting Jesus as a personal Savior and Lord, then that person can say that, yes, I am saved. That means he got the deliverance and the salvation from the punishment or the penalty of the sin. Okay, And that is known as the justification. That is known as the justification. So this justification is nothing to do with that person because that person is not doing anything to be saved. Okay, he is not doing anything to be saved. Just he is doing believing in Jesus Christ and accepting that soul. But the justification is done by God. God is doing that justification, or God is saving that person. Okay, but only one thing that person is doing, he is just believing in Jesus Christ. Okay, so that is known as the justification, and that is the past experience of salvation also. Uh, that is the past experience of salvation. We will read uh, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. It is very familiar verse for every one of us. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Yeah. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. Okay. So this is what already done. We are saved means when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, that work is done. But now our duty is to just believe in Jesus and accept him as our personal Savior and Lord. Okay, so that is the past experience. That Because why we call it as the past experience of salvation? That is already done by Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Now our duty is to believe. That's all. And the second one is we are being saved from the influence of sin we are being saved from the influence of sin. That means the present experience of salvation. How can we say that? The present experience. That means now it is happening. This salvation, this process of salvation is happening now also because this is known as a sanctification. Sanctification, you know, when I was taking the classes for the uh, adult uh, in our church, you know, when we were gathering together, uh, maybe uh, one year ago, you know, I, I was talking about the sanctification, what are the different aspects of the sanctification, all those things. Okay, so I was saying that sanctification is a process that which is continuously happening in our personal Christian life. So that means the present experience of salvation. Now we are experiencing this experience of salvation. That means we are being saved from the influence of sin. For example, even though we are saved, even though we say that we are the children of God and we become the Christians, at the same time, there are influences from both sides. You know, the sin is trying to influence us. Satan is trying to influence us. The world is trying to influence us. But we have to get rid of all those things and we have to, get, uh, we have to overcome the influences of sin by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, we have to pray and we have to read Bible and we have to trust in the Lord. I mean, uh, I live according to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Then a person will be able to overcome the influences of the sin, Satan and the world and worldly pleasures. I mean, so that's what we read in Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 through 22. We know all those verses. Just read one verse at least. Chapter 5, verse 16 only. Only 16, yeah. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of flesh. Walk by the Spirit. You will not obey the, uh, the, the, the uh, worldly pleasures or the flesh. Okay, so that's, that, that is the meaning of that word. That means this is happening the presently, the present experience of salvation. We have to overcome the influence of sin. There are influences 
from all the sides for a Christian, for a, for a believer, but we have to overcome all these things by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we are subjected to the Spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit will help you to overcome all the sinful nature and overcome the sinful, uh, sinful characters. So this is the second one. We are being saved from the influence of sin. And the third one is we will be saved. We will be saved. So how can we explain that? This is called the glorification. The glorification of a person. That is going to happen in the future. This is the complete deliverance and transformation of our body. Okay, The glorification, not that happened in our life, that will be happening during the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. So when Jesus Christ comes in the cloud, you know, we people, our body will be transformed and we will get the complete deliverance on that day. We will get the complete deliverance on that day. So that is called uh, the rapture of the church or the transformation of a body. So that will be happening in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Just read uh, at least uh, uh, one verse. You know, all those verses you know very well, but we will read Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Okay, so, so those who are eagerly waiting for Jesus Christ, so Jesus Christ is coming in the second, in the second time, uh, that is to take the church, take the people of God, take the saints of God, I mean, with him, I mean, those who are ready and those who are prepared to go with him and those who are uh, uh, keeping their life in a, in a holy way. Okay, so that is what we read. And uh, there are some more verses. We are not going to read those verses because those verses also are well familiar with all of us. First Thessalonians chapter four and everything we know very well. So I'm leaving that point there. So these are the three uh, different, uh, different experiences of salvation that we are, uh, we are supposed to know about and the, the first one is we are already saved. That is known as the justification. And the second one is we are being saved from the influence of the sin that is called the sanctification. This is the continuous process till the second coming of Jesus Christ. And the third one is we will be saved completely. We'll be saved. That means the glorification will happen. So the glorification of a body will be happening there. And we will get another body, the spiritual body on that day. So that will be the complete deliverance and the transformation of our body that will going to, that is going to happen on the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, you know, uh, related to that, uh, there, is, there is one verse in Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, uh, verses 4 uh, to 6. Actually, uh, we uh, studied something about that verse, that verse, um, when we were studying from the book of Hebrews. Okay, so anyway, we will read that verse and we will think about those things uh, for a few minutes. Chapter 6, verses 4 through 6. For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the, and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen, fallen away to restore them again to repentance, since they're crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up to contempt. Okay, so what is the question? The question was, I mean, is there any, any chance, is there any possibility that uh, a person's name be erased or removed from the book of life? Okay, so, but here in this verse, you know, I'm, I'm trying to give you the answer for that question. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6 verses 4 following, it says that a, a group of people, this is speaking about a group of people, you know, in, in Malayalam it is very clear you know, uh, so this is speaking that you know, there is a 
and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away. That is very important. And then they tasted everything and they know Jesus and they know that there is heaven and there is hell. And uh, they know that if we reject Jesus Christ, we'll be going to the hell. They know everything. At the same time, they, they prophesy that they, we are Christians and we are doing all the, all the spiritual things and everything. We are attending the church. And, but at the same time, uh, in their personal life, they are away from the presence of God. You know, those people already, they tasted Jesus in their life personally. But now, if they have, yeah, if they have fallen away from the presence of God, it is impossible. Verse 6. It is impossible to renew them again to repentance since they are again crucifying uh, themselves the son of God and put him to open shame. So when they do sin after getting salvation, after becoming a child of God, if that person is continuing in sin, what will happen? You know, that person is again crucifying Jesus through his life, again crucifying Jesus and putting shame on Jesus Christ, putting shame on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So this is a this is a particular verse. It is written. Tangal ke tanne deyu putrani bide kushe kina varum. Amane loga apa vadam varitta varum aga gunda. Avare pinne hi manasan jertile ke pudhu kuvan kari bolla var kari bolla dalle. That means it says that it is impossible to renew them them uh, uh, again to the repentance again to the repentance. But you know the the phrase which is used there it is impossible. But in the original language. It is not impossible, but it is difficult. Okay, you have to read it in that way. It is difficult. Actually, it is a kind of impossible itself, but at the same time, the original language or the original word in the in the root language, which is used, the meaning of that word is it is difficult. That means it is very difficult to, to get back that person if he is getting away from the presence of God and if that person is backsliding. That means there are opportunities for that person to come back, but if he is not, he is still continuing in sin and disobeying God and God's word, he will not be taken up in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. So this is the answer actually, uh, the answer for this question uh, today. And there are possibilities for a person's name to be raised or removed from the book of life even if he is called as a saved person if he is continuing in sin if he is rejecting jesus and disobeying the commandment of god then there are many chances that that person's name will be raised or removed <clears throat> from the book of life that means we cannot say that your salvation is secured so you can do anything you know there there is a group of people today uh, they are known as uh, the extreme grace people. That means uh, 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 that, that's, that's, a, that's a new generation group. So they say that, okay, uh, if you are saved, if you, are, if you get God the salvation, no problem, you can do anything. Because uh, uh, Jesus Christ on the cross, he died on the cross for the previous sins and the present sins and the future sins also. So everything is done, you will be in heaven after your death or during the time of Jesus coming. You'll be in heaven. So this is a teaching, particular teaching of a new generation group called Grace uh, Community or something. Okay, so actually that is entirely a different teaching from the Bible. Bible clearly says that, I mean, if, okay, your salvation, your salvation is secured in heaven, but at the same time, if you are not following the word of God continuously, if you are not following uh, the commandment of Jesus Christ and the word of God, I mean, properly, and if you are doing the sin continuously, then there is a chance that your name will be erased from the book of life. So be careful that none of our name should be removed from the book of life. Amen. So we will pray for all the people that let uh, our name should not be uh, removed from the book of life. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, uh, we completed the study of chapter four of the book of Revelation. And now uh, we will be studying uh, from chapter five. So that was the last question I already explained and uh, uh, clarified. 
So if you have any question about those things, you can just write to me or text to me. Okay, now we will be uh, studying from chapter five now, but uh, just before that, let me tell you something uh, uh, about the similarities between chapter four and five for your more understanding uh, the topics of the chapter five. You know, there are many uh, topics in chapter five. So we have to understand what are the similarities uh, between chapter four and five. You know, there are something uh, without knowing that we cannot study chapter five. So that's the reason I'm giving uh, these points there. Just write it down. I'm not going to explain all those things, but you can just write it down. Okay. Uh, as, soon, as soon as you write, I, I just uh, try to uh, uh, explain also along with that. Now, what is that? The chapter in chapter four, in chapter four, the first one is all the creatures worship God as a creator. We already studied about that. All the creatures worship God as the creator. But in the, in the chapter five, we see all the creatures worship God as the redeemer. In chapter four, God is explained as the creator and the people are worshiping the creator God. At the same time, in chapter five, all the creatures are worshiping God as the redeemer, as the redeemer. And the second thing is, John saw the throne of God in heaven. John saw the throne of God in heaven in, in, in chapter four, but at the same time in, in chapter five, John is watching the scroll, which is in the, in the right hand of God. John is watching the scroll which is in the right hand of God. And the third similarity is, in chapter four, John is explaining about the throne of God. John is explaining about the throne of God. But in chapter five, he is trying to explain about Jesus, the slayed lamb of God. Arukapatta kunyadine kuruche. He is trying to explain about Jesus, the slayed lamp of God. <clears throat> and the fourth similarity is almost uh, the you know the, the fourth one is the last similarity that is God is sitting on the throne. Okay, the Almighty God is sitting on the throne, and the and the living and the four living creatures are there, and twenty-four elders are there. They are worshiping God. Four living creatures and twenty-four elders worship God. That is in four, chapter four. But in chapter five, God is sitting on the throne with a sealed book, with a sealed book, and in front of the throne a lamb which is slayed. In front of the throne, a lamb which is slayed. Great, I think uh, you got all these points, the four similarities <clears throat> between chapter four and five. Uh, the reason that I was uh, explaining these things because without knowing that, you will not uh, uh, you will not be able to understand uh, what is there in chapter five. Now we will go to go to the chapter five. I think you already, I mean, uh, wrote all those points. Now we will go to chapter chapter five. Okay. So uh, as, we, as we study from chapter five, uh, as I told you in the beginning, uh, we won't be able to focus each verse. Okay, so we were doing that kind of method uh, in uh, maybe from chapter one to chapter one to four, but from chapter five, uh, we won't be able to focus uh, each verses, but uh, we will try to pick some of the necessary topics from each chapter and uh, uh, we will move on, okay? So that is going to happen uh, maybe uh, uh, from today's class, okay? So uh, the first heading is from uh, chapter five is the scroll 
or the book in the right hand of God. The scroll or the book in the right hand of God. That is from chapter 5, verse 1. Chapter 5. Yes. I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back sealed with seven seals. Okay. So the, the first thing that we can see from this chapter is the scroll or the book in the right hand of God. That is from Revelation chapter 5 verse 1. Now the scroll is in the right hand of God. That's the first point. Okay. What is that? The scroll is in the right hand of God. What is the meaning of that? Which shows the importance of the scroll and the strength of God in whose hand it is placed. Okay, there is a scroll. We will explain all those things later. There is a scroll or there is a book. Okay, both are same, scroll or book. Because in the olden days, there was no book or there was no paper, but they were writing in a scroll, in a scroll or roll also is there. And they were using that. We'll, we'll, we'll sp speak about that later. Now, uh, uh, that the meaning of that scroll in the right hand of God, okay? Uh, the scroll is in the right hand of God. What is the meaning of that? The importance of the scroll, the importance of the scroll, and also the strength of God, okay? So this scroll is in the right hand of God. That means the importance of the scroll and also God's hand is strong to carry everything and to keep the secret. Okay, this is a secret that that scroll actually is a secret. It's a mystery. Scroll actually is a mystery. So God is just keeping that scroll inside his hands. That means nobody can snatch it out from the hands of God. Okay, now the second uh, thing, the second point is the scroll written inside and on the back. The scroll written inside and on the back. That means written both sides of the paper. Okay, as I told you, uh, it, this is not a paper, this is a scroll. Okay, so uh, it is written both sides of a paper. You know, usually we are writing in, in, in only one side. Okay, one side we are writing in a paper. But uh, this one uh, in the scroll, uh, which is in the which is in the right hand of Jesus Christ, we see that uh, both sides it is written. Okay, why it is it is like that? I mean, it could be it could be mainly uh, because of two reasons. Okay, you can just uh, uh, think about there are two reasons that the the scroll which is written inside and on the back also. That means inside and outside also there is a writing. There is a writing. Okay, there are two reasons. Uh, uh, mainly to prove that what is the reason of that. In the, the first one is, in the olden days, uh, people were using the skin of animals and also the, the scroll made out of the plant called papyrus. So papyrus was uh, one, of, one of the plant uh, which were usually you can see in those days there and uh, uh, people were making the the, the, the kind of scroll or paper out of this plant. So papyrus is the name of a plant. So in those days, in olden days, people were using the skin of animal to write something. The skin of animals, uh, putting through uh, uh, through some of some kind of process, and they are writing on the skin of the animals. So that was the paper for them on those days. And the second thing was uh, the scroll was there. It was made out of the plant called papyrus. Uh, and uh, another thing is because there was no paper on those days, they were using these things. But these both things were uh, were so costly. It was so costly, both the the skin of the animal and also the the scroll uh, which was uh, out of the papyrus. These both scrolls were very costly. So people used to use both side of for writing okay so not only one side but both side they were using for writing okay so this could be one reason that uh, uh, the, in the scroll uh, the both side is uh, right okay written okay so this could be the uh, one reason and the second reason uh, to understand we have to read uh, revelation chapter 22 we will go to uh, revelation chapter 22 verse uh, 18 
Yeah. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues which are written in this book. The second reason could be that nobody can add or reduce anything into the word of God. I mean, if you believe that, nobody can add something to the word of God or reduce anything in from the word of God. Okay. And the word of God is perfect. The word of God is perfect in itself. You know, and I, 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 as we as we see the scroll uh, uh, written both side shows there is no space to add anything afterwards. You know, if some people are thinking that, okay, uh, this is missing here. So we will add something more there. or we will change it like this, or uh, we will uh, uh, reduce something from that portion. No, it's not possible. The word of God is perfect. Of course, direction or uh, some uh, translation mistake or something, uh, that could happen because uh, the translation mistake is not uh, the problem of uh, God uh, who was influencing or illuminating the writers. But the problem is, uh, sometimes, you know, the, there are many people translating from one language to, uh, to other language. So there could be some mistakes in translation, but otherwise uh, the word of God is perfectly okay. So we have everything in the word of God, everything in the word of God. So we have to understand that there is nobody is, 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 is allowed to add anything or to reduce anything. So that could be the second reason that the, uh, the scroll, the both sides, are written okay so uh, uh, especially there is no space to add anything afterwards okay there is no space because the both sides are written already okay so uh, this is the this is the point that uh, we we were uh, talking about the second point and the third one the third point is the scroll is sealed up with the seven seals the scroll is sealed up with the seven seals okay so you can see the uh, ordinary scroll of ancient days in the screen now, then uh, the second one is the picture of scroll, which is sealed with the seven seals. Okay, the first one is the ordinary scroll. So these these kinds of scrolls were available on those days. You know, this is it could be the the scroll of uh, 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 the skin of animal or the 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 papyrus. Okay, that scroll, and they are using some kind of uh, uh, wooden uh, pieces. To, to attach with that, uh, to settle that. And they will fold it like this, and then uh, <clears throat> just opening one side and reading that, and again, closing that side. So that is, that's a method they were using. This is the ordinary uh, one. And the second one, the second one is the uh, sealed one. That means uh, this, about this only, uh, the Bible is speaking in, in, chapter, in chapter five. Okay, so uh, this is the sealed scroll. That means uh, this, this is uh, uh, sealed with, this, uh, with seven sealing, seven sealings are there. Okay, now uh, uh, let us see why this scroll is sealed up with seven seals. This is a question, why this scroll is sealed up with seven seals? Because it shows the scroll is very important. The scroll is very important. And in the Bible, especially uh, in Revelation, the number seven indicates the perfection. Okay, you can see many places number seven, 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 seven. Okay, seven scrolls and seven uh, what is that seals and uh, 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 there are there are uh, many other uh, things. Uh, maybe the seven uh, seven seal or trumpets or something. Okay, there are many things about uh, seven. So usually we say that biblically that uh, uh, that uh, seven number seven indicates the perfection, and also uh, no one is able to open this scroll, but only the qualified person could do it. This is very important, you know. So we can see a scroll there which is sealed with the seven seals, with the seven seals. Okay, and you know John, Apostle John, he was just crying. He was just crying and saying, is there any person to open the seal, to open the seal? Because 
he is just praying and crying that i want to see what is there written inside the scroll i just wanted to see what is there inside the scroll so that's the reason in that chapter we see that apostle john was crying in vision in vision to open that scroll okay but nobody was there you know let me tell you something about the uh, cultural background of jewish people in those days uh, uh, for that we have to read some of the verses also okay so when we uh, study about the scroll uh, which is written in the both side and also um uh, the, the scroll which is sealed with the seven seals we have to think of I mean, study about something about the cultural background of the jewish people so after knowing the cultural background of jewish people we will be able to understand what is the meaning of the word of god which is written in in chapter 5 or um, what is the meaning that it is mentioning that uh, the scroll is there and it is sealed with the seven seals okay we will go to jeremiah chapter 32 verse 10 jeremiah chapter 32 verse 10 yeah i signed the deed sealed it god witnesses and weighed the money on scales okay so you might have read uh, this portion maybe chapter 32 uh, which uh, uh, speaks about jeremiah you know actually uh, up to up to verse 27 we have to read actually but we are at only uh, verse 10 okay up to uh, verse 27 when you read uh, we read about jeremiah uh, is buying a field he's 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 buying a field okay uh, but in verse 10 there is there is a particular uh, usage which is uh, known as the property title deed property title deed which is mentioned in verse 10 verse 10 we already read it right i signed and sealed the deed and called in witnesses and weighed out the silver on the scales that means jeremiah said i signed and sealed the deed this is very you know in malayalam you can call it as aadharam or something aadharam oru sthalathinte aadharam adine kurichana parna property title deed okay so we can see that in in book of jeremiah okay again again we are going to that point in those days there was a there was a property title deed which is written and sealed with a single seal okay it was as per the uh, as per the jewish culture okay they used to make a deed okay that is called the property title deed which is written and sealed with a single seal only one seal will be there that is the that is the jewish culture okay but here we see this scroll the scroll is written inside and on the back and also sealed with the seven seals okay so let me let me try to explain uh, why it is like that you know usually uh, when we buy a land when we buy a land we used to make a sale agreement we used to make a sale agreement so we all do that when we are doing some transaction when we are doing uh some uh, uh maybe we have been be buying something or uh, when we are buying a field or land okay so uh, we want we want make a deed but we are making a sale agreement okay sale agreement will be there but we don't make a deed but in the olden days the person who wished to buy a land he himself will make a deed the person who is supposed to buy the land that person himself will make a deed then after making this deed if he realized okay he already made a deed and after that he is thinking and he realized that i don't have enough money to buy that land uh, uh, then what he'll do he 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 cannot i mean cancel that re, i mean a deed he cannot cancel that deed uh, as per the jewish law okay jewish law says you cannot cancel the deed you have to buy that if you if your deed is written then you cannot cancel that deed you have to buy that but the buyer can do one thing that uh, he can seal this uh, sale deed scroll with the seven seals i think you understand these things you know he can do something if he is not willing to 
uh, to to uh, uh, I mean, what is that? Uh, he is not willing to give it back, and he is saying that okay, I need this property, I need this land. So he can he cannot cancel it, but he can do something that he has to seal that deed with the seven seals, and then the debt amount will be written on the back side of the scroll. Okay, instead of the scroll the deed will be there or the documents will be there but outside the 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 debt will be there that means for example okay he is going to buy that property for 10 lakhs then uh, he doesn't have that money enough money and he is uh, saying that okay i have 7 lakh of rupees and i'll give that and the 3 lakh of rupees i'll be giving later or maybe rupees or i mean dollars okay i'll give it later and when he says that uh, he has to think about okay that is a debt amount okay debt amount and that also will be written on the back side of the scroll back side of the scroll and he gets seven years of time to pay the full amount to pay the full amount seven years will be there he has to within the seven years he has to pay that amount the full amount and get the property back he has the right to open the seven seals if he could pay the full amount Otherwise, he cannot open the seven seal of the scroll. Everything is written inside and the outside. The amount also is written outside. The, the, the uh, pending amount also will be written outside. And the thing is, he has the right to open the seven seals after seven years if he paid the full amount. Now, we are coming to that point. Why it is written and why that scroll is in the hands of Jesus Christ. We are coming to that main thought about the importance of this scroll in the heaven. The importance of this scroll in the heaven. You know, there are different opinions about uh, what is this scroll and uh, what is written in this scroll, which is mentioned in Revelation chapter 5. Okay, There are many opinions, but uh, we will think about mainly four opinions. We are going to I mean, uh, think about four opinions about this point, you know, about what is that scroll in the hands of Jesus and what is written in this scroll, in this scroll. So the first opinion, the first opinion is, this could be the original copy of Bible. This could be the original copy of Bible. Okay? I'm not saying that okay, these four opinions are good or bad, but I'm just think. I mean, uh, giving you the opinions. You no, know? many people think about uh, think about this in 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 many ways. Okay, but we have to think about what will be the uh, the appropriate answer for that. Okay, the first opinion is this could be the, the scroll will be uh, the original copy of the Bible. Okay, and the second opinion is different. This is that the scroll in which it is written about Israel and the regathering of the people of Israel. This is, okay, something is written in this, in, inside the scroll that is about Israel, the people of Israel and the regathering of the people of Israel. That means now the people of Israel, the, the Jewish people, they are scattered into different regions, different uh, countries. So uh, they believe that one day God will recollect all of them. They will, God will regather all of them. So some people say that the, everything which is written inside the, inside the scroll is uh, about the people of Israel and regathering of the people of Israel. And the third opinion is, the third opinion is the writings uh, are about the punishments which comes upon the enemies of the church. You know? Uh, for sure, there will be a judgment and punishment. So some people say that uh, instead the writing, the, the writing inside the scroll could be, could be the punishment which comes upon the enemies of the church or enemies of the Christian. Now, the fourth opinion is very important to understand. The fourth opinion says that the title deed of the earth, the title deed of the earth is written inside the scroll, which is a mystery. The title deed of the earth. So when you read this portion or chapter five, you understand that John is, Apostle John is crying and he's searching for a person to open the scroll. 
but he could not see anybody. He could not see anybody qualified or worthy to open the seal, open the scroll. Okay, but you know, most of the Bible scholars agree with the fourth opinion. Okay? Most of the Bible scholars they agree with the fourth opinion. What is the fourth opinion? Uh, the, the, the things which is written inside the scroll is the title deed of the earth. The title deed of the earth. You know, because there are reasons for that. There are reasons for that. And we have to read some of the verses from Genesis and Psalms and all those portions. You know, uh, we will read, okay, no need to read Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. It is very clear that we know that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That is Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Okay, again, uh, when you read Psalm number 115, verse 16, we will read that verse, yeah. Psalm number 115, verse 16. The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to the children of man. What is that? The highest heavens belongs to the Lord. That means the heavens belongs to the Lord. You know, we already talked about uh, what is the what is the uh, three steps or three uh, compartments of the heaven? Okay, first and second and third. Okay, all those things in the in the previous class. Now, here it says that the highest heavens or the heavens belongs to the Lord, but the earth He has given to mankind. So the earth is given for the mankind. The heaven is for God, and the earth is given for mankind. Okay, again. When you go to Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 30, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 30, that also it is a familiar verse that how God was creating man and what authority is given for the humankind. What authority is given for the humankind. Okay, We read that God gave him the all authority to subdue everything on the earth. That means the, that authority was given for the human kind, right? Okay, the, the authority was given for the human uh, human kind. Okay, so uh, but uh, we have to think about but man handed over it to Satan by his disobedience and sin. This is very important to understand. You know, man had the authority when he was created. Okay, he had the authority to subdue everything on the earth. There was many things on the earth. Many, many creatures were there, but man was having that authority over all the creatures of this earth. But what happened? Through the disobedience of God and through sin, he just, man just handed over it to Satan. So now it is under Satan or in, in the hands of Satan. You know, now Satan is the God of this world. That's what 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 says. Satan is the God of this world now. Read that verse, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from, see from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Okay, what is that? Satan is the God of this world. And also, in John chapter 12, verse 31, it says that Satan is the ruler of this world. What is that? Satan is the ruler of this world. So Satan is ruling over the world now. And he's the God of this world. God means he's the, he's the owner of this world, owner of this earth. Okay. Small letter G. Okay. God of this world and the ruler of this world. That is in John chapter 12, verse 31. And there are some more verses written there. You can just read uh, uh, as you go home. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Afterwards, you can read it. Uh, so now we are going to read, we are not going to read that portion. Okay. You know, that means that the title deed of the earth is in the hands of Satan. Now, the, the, the title deed of the earth is in the hands of Satan, but no man in this world is able to pay off the debt of sin in order to, in order to regain the sale deed of this earth. I think you got the point. You know, there is a title deed of the earth that is in the hands of Satan now. But no man in this world is able to pay off the debt of the sin. Okay? It, was, it, was, it was a huge amount, but nobody was willing and nobody was ready and nobody could pay off 
the amount or the penalty of the sin, okay, in order to regain that sale date of this earth from, the, from Satan. But when you read first, first Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, first Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, let us read that verse also. Yeah. Knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with the perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like, like that of a, of a lamb without blemish or spot. What Peter says there? Okay. By the precious blood of Jesus on the cross, he paid off the penalty and he received the authority back from Satan. This is important to understand. By the precious blood of Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary, he paid off everything. He paid off the penalty and he got the authority over Satan, over everything in this world. Okay, so now let us see what are the qualities that Jesus to open the scroll and the seven seals. Okay, uh, if possible, we'll be uh, thinking about later, maybe you know, there should be some qualities for Jesus to open the scroll and the seven seals, right? No, there are, there, there are many political leaders and there are uh, many religious leaders. There were many philosophers in this world, but they are not able to, not, uh, not, not worthy to open the scroll and the seals, okay? For, so when you, when you study about uh, the history, in the history, both in the Old Testament and New Testament, and before that, you know, even out of the Bible, out of the New Testament or New Testament or Old Testament, you can see there are many political leaders. There are many religious leaders. There are many philosophers. Okay. But they were willing and they were just ready to do that, to open the scroll. At the same time, they could not do that because they were not qualified enough. They were not worthy to do that. Even in Bible also, we see many leaders just like in the Old Testament, Abraham was there, Moses was there, Joshua was there, David was there, and there were many prophets, major prophets and minor prophets. In, in Old Testament, in New Testament, pastors are there, apostles are there, church leaders are there, and many are there, but they are not worthy to do it. Man, if God allow them, they are ready or they are willing to do that. But the, the thing is, they are not worthy for that. They are not worthy for that. But there is only one God, his name is Jesus. Okay, so this is what I just wanted to conclude with uh, this point that Jesus alone is worthy to open the scroll of heaven, the scroll of heaven. We will, we will study many things about, I mean, I mean uh, what made Jesus uh, uh, the, the worthy to open the scroll and the seals. Okay, what made Jesus to open the scroll and uh, worthy to open the seal, okay? So that we will study in the in the upcoming classes. Now, let me tell you one thing, you know, as we were listening from these words, you know, we have to think about, I mean, we have to submit ourselves to the mighty hand of God. You know, we, we were thinking about, I mean, uh, who is Jesus and what Jesus is doing for every one of us and I mean, what we can receive from the Lord. You know, who is Jesus and what is there in the in heaven? There is a scroll in the in the right hand of God and there was nobody to there was nobody worthy to open that scroll but we have Jesus Christ I mean sitting there and he is worthy to be called as our redeemer and he is ready to open the scroll for us and he will reveal everything amen so that's what we understand that we have to trust in the Lord and we have to obey the word of God every time in, in, our, in our personal life and we have to do everything according to the will of God. I mean, so as we were uh, talking, you know, there are chances that uh, one person's name could be erased or removed from the book of life. If, he, if that person is continuously doing the same sin or if he is leading a, a, a sinful life. But if that person is coming back and repenting about his sins and coming back to God, I mean, there are chances that God will, I mean, uh, bless him and God will, I mean, make him again. The, 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 God will give all the blessings upon that person and that person will be 
taken into heaven. Hallelujah. So let us wait for that and let us pray for all the people, those who are suffering and all the people, those who are not able to, I mean, uh, to uh, come closer to the Lord in, the, in these days. Let us pray for them so that uh, they also will be coming to uh, God in the, in, the, in the coming days and let us pray for them also and let us bring all our prayer requests in the mighty hand of God this evening also. Let us all close our eyes in the 